Okay, so we're being told to add two random integers to to the R array. I just want to want to do a quick review about arrays in general, so you have it uh, very clear before starting in your head. So an array is just a value. It, it's just having several values in a variable instead of having just one value. Like for example, if we're gonna have apples. Uh, or let's just say one apple, you would do, uh, well, let's do it with colors, I think it's better, color, then you would do red, right? That's just one color, the string red. But what if I want to have colors, several of them? Then I would do the same red, but I can wrap it in square brackets. And that's going to make it a list of colors with one color only. If I want to add more colors into it, I put a comma. So you can have green, and you can have yellow, so and so. Then another thing it's important to understand about arrays is that indexes or elements have a numeric ID. So, or we call them an index or a position in the array. So this is the position zero, not the position one. It starts at zero. So zero, this is the number one, this is the number two. And then the next thing is how to add or remove element but not hard code not, not like this not like just adding it like this because obviously you can do that or you, if you want to delete you can just delete i i mean with programmatically dynamically so uh, what i mean is adding a new color later on when the user types or chooses a color from a list of colors you can add it here programmatically and for that you need functions and the arrays already come with a bunch of functions inside um, if you google array functions you would see all the functionalities functionalities are oh my bad put also js because if not it's gonna do it in any language always put your language in your query uh, this is gonna show us a bunch of things that you can do with arrays like creating an array access elements in an array i was telling you about the position so the position zero you're you're retrieving the first one the first color or in this case they are fruits. Then the dot function, the dot push, the dot pop, the dot shift. So there's a lot of dots after your array. That's functionality that the array has. Those are the functions that it comes with. Here they are. You can see them in the prototype. That's a good word. When you want to read more about something, you can say array prototype, and it's going to show you everything about the array and, and all the functionalities it has. So in our case, it's telling us to add, right? So if we're gonna add something into an array, here it says that you have to use the push. So it will be something like, let me let me first delete this too, because we already have an array that we need, that, that, we, that we can work with. And then if we do here, r.push, and we pass a new number to it, let's say uh, 90, and we run this, you'll see how it's printing, because we have a console log here on the line number 10, so it's printing. It's printing this array here. And you can see that the last element is 90, and that's exactly what we wanted, because we stopped at 45 when we declared the array hard-coded. We, we call it hard-coded because this is not dynamic or it's not changing over time. This is the actual value that I that the array started with. And then this is changing over time, the array, because the array after, remember that algorithms run from top to bottom, right? So the line number one doesn't have anything. Line number two, number three, number four. So the array was already declared in the number four. And then number seven comes and adds a new element into the array. So the array, when it gets printed, in, when finally the computer reaches line number 10, the array already has all these elements, including the 90. So, I was trying to do an arrow. Yeah. Including the 90. So that push, it's going to add elements into the array. It's going to add the 90. But that's not what we want. We don't want to add the 90. We want to add a random number. Right? So let's just add two 90s, because we need to add two random numbers. And then we're going to replace 90 with the actual random number. And for that, it's also telling us in the instructions that we need to use 
math.random because that's the only thing that JavaScript knows to generate random numbers. So you can look in Google JS random numbers and you're going to see the W3 school, of course. It's going to tell you that if you want to return a random number between 0 and 1, you can use math.random. So we can use that and we'll see what happens. We're going to put here instead of 90, math.random. You don't need the semicolon. You need to put it at the end of the line always. So I'm going to remove from here and put it at the end of the line. I run it and you can see here how we have now all the previous uh, numbers and then we have a one random number and a second random number. And maybe you're thinking, yeah, but those numbers look ugly. Like that's a number, it's a legit number, but it's a decimal number that has uh, decimals. And we don't want that, it's not ideal. I mean, you would think that you want integers. And that's why it's also telling us here, you can use the math and the floor functions to get random numbers. You should do that inside the loop. So why are they speaking about the floor? Because the floor will remove the comma. But if you remove the comma from here and you remove it from here, it's always going to be zero. Because you, you know that now, because we said it a few seconds ago, that math.random always return between 0 and 1. So it will never be more than 0 0.9. 99999. So every time that you cut the decimals, it's going to become 0. So before that, you want to move the comma a little bit to the right. So you want this comma here to move to the next to the next number or maybe to here, you know, so that you can have a big number. So how do we do that? We multiply by 10 or by 100, depending on how big we want it. So we have let, and then we, we can say number, it's equal, yeah, number, it's equal to a random times 10 or time, times 100, if we want a number that has two digits. And you'll see how, let me comment these two for now just to show you how the number now is with two numbers and then it comes with the decimals because we move the comma to the right twice one two okay now we can apply the floor to it so we can do say math dot floor two number and then if we print that you'll see that it's actually now a, a good number like an integer with no decimals so we can cut that now and we can put it in the lines that we comment here. We can put it here and here. And then we can keep printing R. That, that was the only other thing that was being printed. What if we run this now? You'll see that it has now, it ends with 45 and then it adds 75 and 75. But it's always going to be the same number because sadly, we only calculated the random once here in the variable number, and then we applied that number to both floors, so obviously it's going to be always the same. So you have two options. You either duplicate this line, and you have number 2, and you put number 2 here, and it's going to be different now. Or some people like to do it everything in one line, and you can just cut this part and not store it in any variable, but use it right away here. And the same you would do with this one. You don't need a number two, you can just use it right away there and you can delete these two lines and you run it again and it keeps working. You can see that it keeps working. And that's basically how you add random numbers into an array. Let's test it and everything as expected.